It's downright un-American. Ah! Soaring gas prices have changed the way we live. Today on Extreme 4x4, Ian and Jesse have got a way to put money back in your wallet with a system that'll make your own biodiesel. Plus, desert racing meets rock crawling when 43 trucks buy for bragging rights at King of the Hammers. Welcome to Extreme 4x4. Now today, we've put away the bender and we've packed up our welders. And no, we are not gonna tear into this 92 Ford F250 diesel, even though it's a truck that's probably pretty similar to what you guys drive every day. Instead, we're gonna talk about a problem that all of us face, not just guys who build cars and trucks, but more importantly, as a nation in general, and that is the price of fuel. I mean, come on, diesel fuel, it's about $4 a gallon. Regular gasoline, well, it's not that far behind. And since the majority of us out there are using diesel trucks to pull our trail rigs to the trail, and then we're driving them every day during the week, we're getting killed at the pump big time. And that means we don't have money left over for normal stuff, like repairs to our trail rig or parts, or even just stuff we wanna buy every day, like, well, milk. But what are you gonna do about it? Well, if you listen to the car companies, the answer is buy an economy car get better gas mileage, save some money. But does spending 12 grand on a Corolla just to get 29 miles per gallon really worth it? Well, we went ahead and ran the numbers and the answer, it's probably gonna surprise you. Let's say a bare bones economy car costs $12,000. Now for most, that's gonna be a car payment of about 350 bucks a month. Now the average commute is gonna land around 40 miles total each day. Add in 65 miles for weekend driving, and that's gonna be a total of 1,060 miles of driving every month. Now a truck like this diesel Ford here, it's probably gonna land around 14 miles per gallon. Our new economy car will probably get around 29 miles per gallon. Now if we price our fuel out at $3.90, that means it's gonna cost $285 a month to drive this truck that 1,060 miles. Now the car, it's only gonna cost us $147 a month. Now that may seem like a good deal on the surface, but here's the kicker. In order to get back the initial investment of spending $12,000 on that economy car, it is gonna take you seven years worth of driving. Now to me, that's not a very good deal. You're better off just to keep the truck. Plus, you're not gonna be hauling your garbage to the dump in the back of a small economy car. So you're gonna keep your truck. But what if there was a way to cut the cost of operating your diesel almost in half? Plus, it's gonna be better for the environment than any greenie out there driving around in a hybrid. Well, the answer is simple, and it's called biodiesel. Now, I am sure some of you guys are sitting at home right now and you're thinking, you know what? This isn't gonna help me. I do not own a diesel powered pickup truck. Well, you have to think of the big picture here. Everything that you own at one time or another was delivered somewhere on the back of a diesel powered semi truck, tractor and trailer. And it's just simple economics that if the fuel inside that truck cost half as much, well, what you bought would be cheaper as well. Now, before we get into cooking our own fuel, let's take a look at what exactly biodiesel is. It is an environmentally friendly, safe alternative fuel that you can use in any diesel engine, whether it be a daily driver, truck or car, heavy equipment, or even some farm machinery. Now it's an approved fuel for use inside the United States by the EPA, CARB, as well as the DOE. And it's undergone extensive testing for its sustainability, environmental impact, as well as emissions. But the big question always is, is where does biodiesel come from? While diesel is made from a petroleum-based fossil fuel, Biodiesel is made from plants, primarily the soybean, which is harvested, then the proteins and oils are extracted to make food and cooking oil. That recycled oil is chemically processed through transesterification. The result, pure biodiesel or B100. But the future of bio may come from algae. Yes, common pond scum grown in greenhouses using wastewater can produce upwards of 30,000 gallons of oil per acre per year. Compared to just 220 gallons from soybeans, that's a lot. Which means one day we can have a network of fuel stations pumping biodiesel that will simply waste. 
Now, since there aren't biodiesel fuel stations all across this country quite yet, what option do you have? Well, it's pretty simple. You're gonna make your own fuel using an extraction system like this one from extreme biodiesel. Now this will mix our activator as well as oil together and then dry filter it so we have a clean biofuel that we can burn in any diesel engine. But the cool thing about this kit is we're not gonna be using virgin oil in our little refinery. We're gonna be using garbage. This is waste vegetable oil and most restaurants will give you this stuff for free out of their deep fryer when they're done with it because they normally have to pay to have the stuff hauled off by a rendering company. Now before you go and just grab any oil from any restaurant, ask to see the actual jug of new fryer oil that they're gonna pour into the deep fryer and make sure it says clear vegetable oil. If it says shortening on it, don't use it. It won't make good fuel. Just keep looking for another restaurant. Coming up, the desert guys love to go fast, while rock crawlers love getting technical. What happens when both extremes are combined in a single course? Find out at King of the Hammers next. to Extreme 4x4. Now of course we all love saving money. That's why today we're showing you how to cook up your own batch of biodiesel. The first step in the process is to get all of our oil into a barrel to get ready for extraction. We're using a 55 gallon steel drum with an integrated drum heater to get the oil up to 140 degrees before pumping it into the machine. Once the oil is hot enough, we will draw it into the main chamber using the pickup tube attached to the control panel. Now before we make any fuel, we need to mix it really well inside this chamber. So we simply close these two valves and let it run through for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now we need to know how much methanol and KOH to add into this unit right here. And to do that, we're gonna take a sample of our oil, perform a simple pH test. It all starts by making a concentrated solution of KOH and distilled water in the supplied red top bottle. Then with pure methanol in the green bottle, we can mix 10 milliliters of pure methanol with one milliliter of oil and stir it until it's completely mixed. Then three drops of the pH solution. And finally, we add a measured amount of the titrant solution from the red bottle and mix until the pH is a nine. We're looking for a bluish green color. Then we record the amount of titrant used. Now all we have to do is plug all the values we have into the titration calculator on the Extreme Biodiesel website. Now we used 8.5 milliliters of our titrant solution and when we calculate it, it'll tell us exactly how much oil, methanol, and lye to use. In our case, it's gonna be 1,277 grams. Later on, we'll break free from the big oil companies and light the burner on our own biodiesel processor. Just think of all the money we're gonna save. Stay tuned. In Extreme 4x4's event of the week, we're off to the Mojave Desert for a race like no other. Mixing desert and rock racing. I've uh, been dreaming about an event like this for a long time. 43 drivers came out to the Mojave Desert for the first ever King of the Hammers race. Yeah, it's a huge event. I think this uh, King of the Hammers event is the first time desert and rock crawling have gotten together. A 50 mile one lap loop, the course features 40 miles of open desert racing. We're in the Mojave Desert, the toughest desert land in the United States. And 10 of the Hammer Trail. I think it's probably, in my opinion, the coolest concept race. Jeff Knoll and David Cole brought this concept race to life. Bottom line, racers like racing. We tried to come with something that's really gonna push the limits. What they came up with is the toughest one day off-road event in the world. This is the Baja 1000 of rock crawling. It's pretty gnarly out there. With names like Jackhammer, Clawhammer, and Sledgehammer, the hammer's portion of the race wasn't just gnarly, it was pure evil. It just seems that the most constant, non-stop, big rocks and obstacles is here. These are hardcore rock crawling trails. 
The rocks here are brutal. This rock out here is jagged, it's nasty. It will cut your tires, it will cave in your vehicle. It'll rip you apart if you don't know how to maneuver through this type of terrain. It didn't get any easier when they hit the desert. These vehicles are not made for 18 inch whoop sections at 60 miles an hour. So it's gonna be some excitement out there. You gotta watch out for the danger points out in the desert because that could end your race in a hurry. They've got the whoop trails, they've just got washouts, cross grains. You know, you gotta be ready for it all. You gotta pay attention. No matter how ready they were, trouble was a constant companion. I think attrition's gonna be huge. People are probably gonna be driving over tires and tubes and hoods. <laughs> it's a thinking race. Like, you can't push your car too hard or you're gonna break it. You can't go a thousand miles an hour through the rock sections. Or you definitely could drive faster than your car would really wanna go in the desert. So I think you gotta pick an achievable pace. Once the race started, they quickly learned that no pace guaranteed survival. Lost the rear cable shifter here. We don't have no rear. We got front wheel drive, flat tire. Still gonna go. And no brake, yeah, I forgot about that. Littering the course was a trail of destruction. It's total carnage out there, you know? I mean, it's, it's like you're just driving it to the scene of the crash. Early on, J.R. Reynolds was out front. His lead didn't last long. First, we had a little vapor lock problem. That slowed us down about eight or 10 minutes. And then we came back and uh, tore the front length mount off the car. And we were saying goodbye to everybody and we went 10 feet and we got a flat tire. What else could happen now? With the flat fixed, JR was ready to get back in the game. We've had at least three hours of delays now. Get back on uh, the road here, we're gonna still beat some people. At the King of the Hammers, that kind of optimism only gets you so far. And for J.R. Reynolds, it got him 25 feet. Upper length mount broke again. Is that what broke the first time? Yeah. And as far as I know, there's no warranty on it. So I think it's out of my pocket this time. <laughs> <laughs> the breakage these drivers had to endure only made them more determined. Oh, we're going to fix it and eventually right finish this race. Right behind you. Right here. Yeah. That's what I our plan is. This is beating you to death. One minute, wide open the next. It's, it's perfect. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4, where we're right in the middle of brewing up our own batch of biodiesel using an extreme biodiesel extraction kit. Now, so far, we've heated up and pumped in our waste vegetable oil into the main chamber, and it's circulating. We did a pH balance test to determine how much methanol and KOH we needed to add to the mix to have good, clean, burning biodiesel. And now, all we have to do is put both those substances into this chamber, the methanol as well as the potassium hydroxide. Now this is a good time to talk about some of the safety precautions when working with these two chemicals. Now KOH is a short form version for potassium hydroxide. And when you purchase it, it will come with a material safety data sheet to outline all the hazards of this substance. Now we're using a flake formed KOH and that will eliminate any dust that gets kicked up when you pour it into the hopper because the dust is toxic. And what's gonna happen here is our methanol is gonna get pumped up and showered over top of that KOH and it's going to create a substance in here that's known as methoxide. Now before we can mix the methoxide into the main chamber to turn our waste vegetable oil into biodiesel, it's going to need to circulate for about 20 to 30 minutes. So this is the perfect time to head back to Johnson Valley and find out who got crowned King of the Hammers. Both a desert and rock race. All the red sections are rock crawling sections and the other is just regular desert. Rig set up for the King of the Hammers had drivers scratching their heads right up to race time. We've been spending the last couple nights revalving shocks and getting them tuned where they can handle the desert and do well on the rocks. You kind of kind of riding a fine line there. Our suspension on this vehicle is set up more for the rock crawling sections than it is the desert section. But we're gambling on that, hoping that we can do real well in the rocks, maybe not quite so good in the desert but that, that's our strategy. That's the way we're approaching this race. Pro desert racer Pete Soren wasn't a believer in the rock first strategy. They don't know what all this desert's gonna do to their cars because they don't race for 
60 miles at a time. They just do little short stints and I think it's going to be a big surprise for uh, both groups. Leaving the gate one at a time in 30 second intervals, the start position picked from a half. We drew 34. The trails are really tight. There's some bottlenecks up there. Realistically, I don't know anyone outside the top 15 can win this thing, but we'll see. Rock crawling great Shannon Campbell started last. They're like, Shannon, you're starting last. And I thought they were joking and I was like, what? But once I found out I drew last, you know, what do you do? What Shannon did will be talked about by future generations. He powered through the field, dominated the rocks and blazed through the desert. You ride that junk. He crossed the finish line in three hours to become the first ever King of the Hammers! Passed the entire field, came in here and it was done his interviews and laughing by the time second place came across the finish line. He's, he's astonishing. I mean, a ph phenomenal driver. Doing that, that was, that was cool. I mean, it, it'd give me something to tell my kids about later on, you know. We're back on Extreme, where we are about to turn 25 gallons of waste vegetable oil into cool, clear biodiesel once we add our methoxide mixture. All we have to do now is turn the recirculating valve to the eight o'clock position, open the jet valve, and hit the switch. Right away, you'll notice the amount of liquid in the main chamber is gonna rise five gallons as the methoxide is added. Then the entire mixture needs to be circulated for one hour. Now the hour long circulation is just to make sure everything gets mixed. Then this whole mixture is gonna have to sit for 12 hours. Now during that 12 hour period, what's gonna happen is the glycerin is gonna interact with the KOH. It's gonna become heavier than the oil itself. It's gonna sink to the bottom. The methanol is gonna bond with the base oil material and that is what's gonna become our clean, clear biodiesel fuel. Now while we wait for this to mix and then sit for 12 hours, we're gonna go ahead and have a look at some of the numbers with this fuel. Pure biodiesel or B100 has been tested by the EPA. And how does this grab you? 67% decrease in unburned hydrocarbons, 48% less carbon monoxide, and 100% less sulfites. Cost? Well, we checked around, got our methanol from VP Fuels at five bucks a gallon. We've used $5 worth of KOH, and that means our biodiesel is costing us a buck 20 a gallon. So after letting the whole mixture sit for 12 hours, we went ahead and drained the glycerin off the bottom of the main chamber. Now that, believe it or not, we can use to make soap later on. Then the rest of the bio, we push through this two hour filter kit. And what we end up with is cool, clear biodiesel ready to be dumped into our pickup truck. And it's honestly that easy to make your own biofuel. So get your friends together, go in on a kit as a group and sit around your garage on the weekend and make your own fuel. You'll have no problem finding buddies willing to help you burn up biodiesel when you're sharing it at a buck 20 a gallon.